after the session. So uh, again, my name's John Mayfield. I am a real estate broker in Farmington, Missouri. I'm also a licensed broker in Florida. I do a lot of, I do mainly, uh, I do a lot of training and teaching all around, um, all around the world. I'm, I'm blessed and fortunate that I get to travel a lot. And uh, there's just kind of was in the right place at the right time. And I've made a lot of international connections. So I get to go uh, a lot of places and teach technology. But I also, um, my, my first and foremost passion and love is, is being a real estate broker. I actually got my license in 1978 at the age of 18, believe it or not. So some of you can quickly calculate how old I am. And in 2006, I just have to be honest with you, I was kind of burned out and I, I thought the grass was probably greener on the other side of the hill. So I left in 06 to uh, pursue a career in banking. And we all know what happened in 07 and 08, and it wasn't a good time for the banking industry and all the promises and things they had made. And uh, long story short, I ended up unemployed with a non-compete clause and, and, and a horrible economy. So I started speaking and training and continue to do that. But I, I reopened my real estate office when my non-compete clause was up and have continued to work with past clients and customers and uh, have, have a couple of agents who work with, with me. So I love real estate and I love this product. I use it regularly. And when I started teaching this, it was just really more out of uh, trying to fill in some some time because I'm a virtual broker. I work from home and it's good to get out in front of uh, live audiences and other associations. But then I started seeing just how powerful and how cool this application is. And so uh, now I'm teaching national courses uh, once a month and we're going to talk about the tablet course today. So you're looking at the desktop version of NAR RPR that uh, you would look at on your on your laptop or your computer, but we're going to actually get in and take a look at the at the tablet. So I'm going to I'm going to broadcast my tablet or stream it over to my to my um, laptop, and you'll be able to take a look at it. So very quickly, and this is only about a 30 minute webinar. It's not real long. I am recording it. I'll be glad to answer any questions, but if we could, we may need to wait until the end of the session. Most of you probably already know a little bit about RPR and what it is. Um, you know, we can use it with buyers and sellers. We can use it to create reports. And, and uh, I use RPR on my, I use an iPad Pro and I use the big version, the 12 and a half inch iPad Pro. And I use the Apple Pencil. And I, I want to kind of like dive off the course a little bit towards the end and show you how I'm using it with customers and, and clients and, and they absolutely love it. And it helps me tell a story and be more visual in giving my presentation versus what I can do with my MLS uh, that, that I use. So um, what is RPR? That's a question a lot of people want to ask me and, and all the time, you know, is this a national MLS or, you know, what in the world is RPR? And RPR is basically a big database. It's got tons of properties in it, uh, over 170 million you can see right here. And we, we call this partial centric property information, which just means we're aggregating data that is available publicly on the internet for you and I, so that we can have it in one central location. And what's really cool about RPR is because it's gathering and aggregating data from all over the internet, the World Wide Web, bringing it into one database, we can actually use this thing called big data and we can develop algor algor algorith algorithms, there we go, uh, to predict and, you know, figure out what a property might sell for, similar to a Zestimate, right, As, like the, what Zillow does. However, we've got, we've got an advantage over some of the other public algorithms that I'll talk about here. So it's exclusively for realtors. If you are not a realtor, you're not a member of the National Association of Realtors, you cannot use it. So it's only for you and I. And it's delivered 
through a cutting edge, evolving leading application. I'm on part of the team that gets to look at the new changes that are coming down the pipe for RPR. And I'm telling you what, it's mind boggling the things that we continue to add. In fact, one of the recent things we just added to the mobile application is the ability to pull up traffic counts anywhere, right from your mobile phone, traffic counts in front of a property. Now, I've been in real estate so long, I tell this story because it's just mind boggling to me that um, I remember selling a commercial property to a franchise who wanted to put a fast food restaurant in. And I'm in a rural area, so we kind of, I have the ability where we do a little bit of commercial, a little bit of residential and farms and land and lake and resort, the whole the whole gamut. But I was selling, this was years ago, selling a commercial property to um, a franchise that wanted to put a fast food restaurant in our area. And they wanted traffic counts. They wanted to know the traffic counts. Literally, I had to call our local highway department who referred me to our state highway department who this is how long I've been in real estate, but who had to put that information in the mail to me and mail it to me. And three days later, I had this data that was probably several years old, but it was a traffic count. Today, you can get that information right from the palm of your hand from the RPR app. So we're adding things to RPR every month. It's really cool. And the best part is we're not charging you anything for it. I mean, you pay for it with your realtor dues, but there's no additional charge. So the consumer has no public access. It's just for you and I. And keep in mind, it's not an MLS. I mean, RPR has to get its data from the MLS. It's not any kind of consumer-facing business model where we are resyndicating information or distributing it out or trying to get consumers to come and click on a listing and then you have to have an ad there. I mean, none of that. This is just a database for you and I that's as members of the National Association of Realtors. And and it's really a great tool because we can use it to pull up flyers. We can accurately price property. We can farm and prospect. I'll show you about that in just a moment. And we can impress buyers and sellers with RPR through our reports and really stand out at a listing presentation and so much more. I tell this story in some of my live classes, and some of you may have heard me tell it on a national webinar before, but I remember driving to Columbia, Missouri. I was going to teach an RPR class, and I'd been having some really tremendous success with RPR. I mean, I um, will be honest to you that I was preaching a message in the pulpit in front of uh, in front of uh, real estate agents about RPRs. So I'm preaching this message, and I'm not practicing it like I should have been. Shame on me, right? And so I had this property I couldn't sell, and I um, I said, you know, John, you've got this tool called RPR. Why don't you just figure out what the thing needs to be listed for? So I got into RPR. I started doing the report, really painstakingly went through, picked out the comps, did everything I was teaching in the class. And my listing was like overpriced by $20,000. And I told this seller, I said, I, I said, I can't sell you. His name was Matt, Matthew. And I said, Matt, I can't sell your property. It's just, it's priced too high. And I sat down with this report and we went through it. And I told him, I said, you have one of two options. You either need to rent it because he had moved out of the property. I said, you either need to rent it and wait for the market to return, or you've got to drop the price. And he said, let's drop the price. Let's get it sold. We dropped the price. Within three weeks, I had it under contract and it sold. I had another lady, same scenario, could not get her to budge off her price. When I sat down with the RPR report and showed her what I was up against, she said, John, let's lower the price. We lowered the price and it sold. And I started having success after success after success. So I'm driving to Columbia, Missouri, back to my story on uh, to teach RPR. And I'm listening to this MP3 of this guy talking about um, online marketing. And uh, his name is Joe Polish. You can go Google him. Very fascinating gentleman who 
has made millions on online marketing, does some creative things. And Joe said during this interview, he goes, you know, there's really only one difference between a dollar bill and a hundred dollar bill. And my ears perked up. I thought, what it, what's, what's the difference? You know, I, I know it's the numbers on the dollar bill, but what's the difference? And he said, it's the message. And I thought to myself, that's why RPR works. And if you get nothing else out of this presentation, I just want you to know what RPR does for me versus my competition. It gives me a different message, a hundred dollar bill message over my competition. And it will you too. It will give you a hundred dollar bill message over your competition because your competition is going to take out to that property, two or three pieces of paper they printed from the MLS, and you are going to use an RPR report that's like 80-something pages, and some of you don't start throwing things at your computer because I don't print out 80 pages. I'm going to show you how I do this on my iPad. But when I go through it and I make some notes and I email it to them, it wins business every time. And you will hear people at the counter, at the kitchen table, when you're preparing the listing agreement, say to you the exact same thing they have said to me. Man, you have put a lot of work into that report. So it really helps you stand out between um, the, the competition and in your listing presentations and so much more. So one more slide, and then we're going to get right into the iPad. But I think it's important for you to know what that why we have RPR and what's this all about. We've got this thing out there called big data. I've already talked about it a little bit here. I mean, people are getting information and they're aggregating data and they say, you know, for example, Zillow says, oh, well, we've got all this, uh, these properties that are for sale. What if we come up with a, an algorithm and we develop based on what's going on in the marketplace, similar to your property and similar to other properties that are for sale, or if we can find public sold information, and some states have that, our algorithm will give us estimate. In fact, I just read an article somewhere the other day where Zillow says, we'll pay a million dollars for somebody who can come up with a better algorithm. Well, Anyway, uh, I'm not into math that much, and I don't know all of the ins and outs except to say there's one little item we need to look at on this uh, screen right here, and Zillow only is using public information. See that? So this is an automated value, valuation, and they just calculate and try to tell you what your house is worth, but they're only using public information. Now, in Missouri, we are a non-disclosure state, which means they don't have public sold information. Anyway, this is a big deal today. And data's here. The computer's here. It's not going to go away. Consumers are expecting this. And so as the National Association of Realtors, we figured, you know what? We better get in this game and we better try to bring some uh, accuracy and some stability to the marketplace. So we created the RV, we, we registered it, we created what is called an RVM. It's a Realtors Valuation Model. Now notice we too can use the same public information that the other folks use, but we have what? The MLS which means we have access to active information, sold information, and our off-market data. So when we put our information through an algorithm, we really believe we're giving you the most accurate valuation product that's available. And so, you know, I, I, I tell this story. I'm showing this house down on Corker Road, just south of Farmington, you can Google it, Corker Road, K-O-R-C-H-E-R. -E it's the first house on the right. And uh, I had this house, and I had to sell this house in order to get a domino effect going on several other properties. So I get this call, and this guy says, 
um, you know, I want to, we want to look at this house on Corker road that I have listed. Can we look at it Thursday morning about 11? And I said, sure. And, and I hung up the phone and I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes do you just get the feeling when you get a phone call and you talk to somebody, I think they're going to buy that house. I mean, that's the feeling I had from these people. They'd driven by the home. They wanted to look at it. So 11 o'clock Thursday, I get to the property. We get out of the car. I'd never met these people before in my life. He puts his hands on his hips, gives me this really mean look, and then proceeds to ask me, how come this house is only worth such and such on Zillow? <laughs> and I said, that's a great question, and I'm really glad you brought that up. And I proceeded to tell him about Zillow's calculation and that they only had access to public information and that my valuation was coming from a totally different source that included much more information. And as you will see, my information allows me to use my experience and my knowledge in the marketplace to fine tune my valuation. So, you know, you're going to run into this type of information periodically as a real estate professional. And we've got a great tool now that we can use called RPR to help us overcome uh, objections and challenges so that we can close more deals. And by the way, those people purchased that home, the domino effect happened and everything worked out fine. But had I not been familiar with RPR and been able to answer that objection, I could have maybe lost that transaction. So we're going to talk about RPR mobile today, and I'm going to show you how to use this. It looks the same whether you have an Android or an iPhone. I'll be using an iPad or if you have an Android tablet. You can download it from the App Store. And uh, so we're going to get right in now and start looking at RPR. So I'm going to move this over and well let me just cancel that and minimize that and let's launch my ipad and i'll bring that up right here okay so you should be able to see my ipad now and i have my apple pencil here we'll use it as well and so i'm gonna just search for rpr because as we know if we take our finger halfway down in the middle of the screen we can pull we can search for the apps that are on our device i have tons of apps so um so when i have a the touchpad set up so that i can just uh use my finger and and it should log me in we are using technology so weird things could happen but um the ipads is launched up i want to tell you what too and I'll show you a couple apps I'm using with RPR on my iPad, but I use my iPad all the time. I mean, I, I use my Apple Pencil. I get contract signed. I use it in presentations. I mean, to me, it's a, it's a great tool. So we're on the uh, on the RPR iPad now. I will make one other disclaimer: um, if you have the twelve and a half inch. Uh, iPad, the bigger screen, I just generally sometimes log in through my web browser and, and it looks just like it looks on my desktop. So if you don't want to have to, pardon me, if you don't want to have to learn a new app, uh, the bigger iPad's really big enough that you're, you're fine to just log in right from your, um, from your, from your Safari browser. And I'll show you how that works as well. So notice that, um, Right here, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to use this mouse just to kind of show you some things. But notice I have some properties that are for sale, 16 near me, three new listings, two that have recently sold. Um, if I want to press my finger on one of these, I can press my finger and it will bring up the property over to the right hand side. See that? Now, I can also then exit out of this if I want to exit out and go right back over to this screen. I will be totally up front with you. I tend to use the list button up here versus looking at them on the map. Occasionally, I like to look on the map. But if I go up and select list, it brings all of my list of properties up over here on the right. So now I can take my finger and I can slide up and I can say, 
okay, uh, this is a property I'm looking for right here. So now you can see that I have access to this property, but my list is still up on the left-hand side. And if, they, if we look at this and they say, oh, that's too big. We don't need that much square footage. And they say, what about this one right here on Cim Cimarron Circle? I can select it and notice it now pulls up. And I, I still have my list right here on the side. Now, if we want full property details, right down here at the bottom, I can select full property details for this property. I can also sort. So if I want to sort this list, I can sort this by least expensive. So now I'm going to sort my list by least expensive. So you can see now they're starting at the lower price on up. If I want to sort again, and this time I want to sort by uh, days active in RPR, now I'm just looking at the most recent properties that are in RPR. So there's some really good sorting features. I can also sort by filter. So if I want to go into filter and I want to say, you know, I really don't want to look at the pendings. So I'm going to turn that off. And I don't want to look at distressed. And I don't want to look at leased properties. So now I just come down here to apply filters right there. So I'm going to select apply filters. And now it will sort that list and I can see everything that I've just requested. Now, if I want to go back to filter, I can select filter and I can reset right there in the middle. So I'm going to reset my everything back to normal and I'm going to go, go to sort right in the middle where I have a checkbox and I'm going to um, We'll just put, we'll sort these by least expensive because I've got everything else there. Notice under the sort, I can also sort by open house. So if I want to see what's going to have an open house coming up, we could take a look at those as well. I held an open house Sunday and did no advertising. I, I don't do a lot of print advertising, but I just posted it through my MLS, which went out to Zillow and Realtor.com and I want to tell you what, I mean, I was busy the whole, the entire time I had people there and it was a very successful open house. And um, so now I've got this property up and again, all of my other properties are right here on the side. Now let's take a look at one more really cool feature, which is called draw. So I'm going to hit draw. And now let's just say that I want to draw a map around this neighborhood this area right here. So notice I've just sorted by drawing a map and I'm going to hit list up in the top. And now I can look at those properties in that area by what I just sorted. And so if we come down here and we say, well, let's see, find a property that, um, let's take this one right here for 276. And so here's the property. And now I'm going to come down here and select full property details so we can kind of see what happens here. And you can see that as I go into full property details, it's going to give me more real estate space and give me pictures of the property. I do want to make notice uh, or mention here that uh, now I have my iPad turned sideways, but if you'll notice right down here, if I want to go to one picture, there's three little icons down here in the bottom corner where my mouse is. If I want to go to one picture, I can select that. And now if I swipe my finger across, we can look at the photographs of that specific property. Now, if I want to go back to four pictures, I just select the four boxes and I get four pictures at a time. Notice right next to that, there's an overhead. So if I select the overhead, the airplane, I get an overview. And then next to that is the Google 360 view. And so now I can look at this property through Google and we, we can take a look with my customer or client uh, to take a look at, at the property in that in that view right there. So if you want to take a look at the neighborhood, you can do that. 
So I'm going to go back to the photographs. And now if I scroll up, I just want to kind of point out some things for you here. And uh, I'm going to draw on this a little bit. Uh, notice that I have some information right here about the property. So I scroll on down. I've got more information right there. Get rid of that, uh, which gives me the listing agent's details. Um, I can also, right over here, there's a little investor analysis tab, which is pretty cool. If this was an, in, uh, an income producing property, if I'm on my phone or I have my iPad connected here with my Wi-Fi and Google Voice, I can actually call right from my iPad. I do it right from my computer. When I'm traveling overseas, I, I do almost all my calls through uh, Google Hangouts for free. And so I could literally, if I was looking at this in Dubai or Finland and I was needed to get some information, I could just press this button if I'm on a Wi-Fi spot and it would launch Google Voice and it would call call the agent and they'd have no idea where I was and I could talk to them about that. So uh, really uh, ability there to call the agent. I'm going to scroll on down some more. And of course, we have dir directions. Uh, I also, over on the right, I'm just going to press these two buttons. Let's take a look at directions. So it's going to load up or bring up directions for me to that property from where I'm at. Now, keep in mind, that was the one thing I should have mentioned earlier, is that because I am on Wi-Fi and in my home office, that's pulling up properties that are within a certain range around where I'm at. Now, because I don't know if I have the GPS module loaded in my iPad, but if that was on your mobile phone, it would pull that right up in your maps. We could also, same way, look at the traffic, so there's no traffic accounts available for this area. And, uh, you know, that's no problem there. So I'm going to go back, hit the X button and go back here. I can look at nearby properties that are for sale. So if I want to look at other nearby properties by this property, I can do that. I'm going to hit the arrow in the top left corner to go back where I was. If I want to find nearby comps, it's now going to just search comparable properties in that area. Again, I'll go up to the top left corner and hit the back arrow. And now I have access to information, public record, so forth. Uh, I can kind of see what's happening, some charts and graphs here. Look at this. I've got access to, to property information. This started out at 297.5. Now they're down to 276. So it gives me some good abilities there. So now the traffic traffic map decides that it wants to come up and give me directions. So, okay. So I just go back to RPR. Um, so I've got access to the price change history in the MLS. I have all the information on schools. If I want to get a school report, I can select that right here. If I want to find nearby properties in the Farmington Middle School. So, you know, if it brings up multiple school districts in your area, you can actually search other nearby properties. Uh, we can find schools in other places. We've got all the information about the home. And a new feature we just added, which is this home energy consumption. So look at this. I can actually look at this house and compare it to other properties in the local market area and actually see consumption that's happening uh, through, through that specific property. So I'm gonna... All right, so that's kind of some information that we have from the RPR app. We also have the ability to get directions down at the bottom. We can call other agents. We can have notes and reports. And I wanna show you that on the mobile phone which we'll do, I think will give you some, some interesting information. Now, let's go back up here to the arrow in the top left corner. And let's hit the top arrow again, back up there where my mouse is. Just kind of go all the way back. And the other thing if I wanted to do is I can go up here to the home button right up here. And so when I select the home key, that will bring me back to this specific area. Now, if I want to look at 
um, if I want to make a change here, if I go to the gear icon, which is this green gear icon in the top left corner, I'm going to select that. And notice here I can upload my picture and my company logo to go on my reports. If I come down to user settings, the second one down, I can actually change my radius. So I'm going to change this. Well, I was going to change it. Let's do user settings and and usually on your iPad, what you have to do is you have to touch your finger out away from, let's see here. There we go. So we just had to move it over for one mile. Now, when I go back here and I, I uh, just hit the X button up at the top, it's going to save and you'll notice that the number of properties that actually pulled up are going to be much more because I'm actually searching in a mile radius. My So this 16 number is going to change to 43, five new listings. Personally, I like to leave, I'm going to go back to this green icon in the top left corner, user settings. I like to leave mine at five, half a mile. And the reason I like to leave it at a half mile is because sometimes you can get too much data if because it's pulling in from the GPS. And a lot of times I'm using my iPad or my iPhone and I'm in front of a home and I really don't want too many properties to get, you know, to get mixed up in. So your gear icon, you've got lots of, you know, you can you can actually set up your MLSs there, your password, you can email RPR, you can ask for help and a lot of other thing features right there. So let's go into this. Uh, let's go back to that property we just looked at. And one of the really cool things that we can do is we can go up here, and I'll show you where that's at. Is right up here, this little uh, between this the star and the camera right there. If we select this with our finger, we have the ability to pull up our recent properties our recent searches, and our recent reports. So I'm going to pull up this recent report right over here uh, that I did on this property. So I'm going to hit uh, View Report. And so here's a property that I pulled up in my, you know, in my marketplace. This was a test I was actually doing. <laughs> Because I want to, sh you can actually add customized pages to RPR. So um, in this point, now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit this little arrow bit button right there. And that gives me the ability to either airdrop it or send it to another program, or I can print it, I could save it to my Dropbox and so forth. So I'm going to save this in a little program I call that I use called Notability. See that right there? And Notability is always one of the top 20 apps in the iTunes store. I use it all the time. So I'm going to select OK. And we're going to go out here and we're going to pull Notability up right there. What's cool is it's a pencil and it's a, you know, it, it's the ability to write and so forth. So I'll just create a new note. I want all of those notes to come in. I'll import it. And so now I can open up this um, this document that I just, this RPR, this is what I use. The really neat thing about having this up is I can make notes. That's too big. I, I'm always doing different things. So let's just erase that. But I can go into the pencil and I can change the size of the pencil. And I can even change the color if I want to. But now I can take notes. I can circle things as we go through. I was doing a test because I'm, I'm using um, Adobe and you can upload custom pages within RPR. And what I wanted to see, this was a short video I had at one of the uh, conferences I was recently at. And I wanted to see. And I think I can figure this out, that if I 
upload a PDF that has a video embedded in it, would the user, when I email this to them, be able to click on the video and that video uh, would, would run? So that's why that's there. But you can see here the, that's listed for $2.99, but when I, when I did the comp analysis for my buyer that I'm working with as a buyer's agent, you know, based on my comps and my information, I'm not coming up anywhere near two ninety nine. dollars So you can use that same principle when you're going over this with, with buyers and sellers. Uh, you can, you know, what's really neat is, and I don't go over every report, but here's a report that I would probably go over with my seller if I'm on a listing presentation. And, and I would write with my Apple pen. And I want to tell them, you know, what we're looking at here is the estimated median home value for our zip code, 63640. And what I really want my sellers to know is this is you in, in this zip code. This blue line down here, this is the median for our area. Now, my iPad's at an angle, so I'm kind of writing a little bit different. But I'm, I'm able now to visually tell my customers, hopefully clients, that, you know, I understand you're going to be pricing up here, but please don't get mad if I can't show your house every, every day or every week because look at the spread we have. This is where we're at. And this is, I mean, this is where most buyers are in our marketplace. This is where we're going to be pricing the property. Now, I might erase this just so I can, you know, get all of that off of there. But when I come back here, I want to remind them, and I'll leave this, is uh, remember, this is where you're at. This is the market. So if we get an offer... I really want you to understand there's a big gap here. So now I can go on down and I can just pick out various things that I want to, you know, you can look at this in advance and see what you want to go over. Uh, a lot of times I'll jump down here to the comps. And what's really great about this with the comps is you have the ability to add notes. So a lot of times I'll have a note and I can highlight some of these notes. Or I can circle that these homes, you know, if you come in at $299, you're way above the competition. Look where everybody else is at. So this is called notability. You have the ability uh, to handwrite. You can change your pen. You can highlight and you can change the highlighter. If you want to do yellow, you can do yellow. And you can erase. You can always use the back arrow to, you know, to get rid of things. And look at this over here has a microphone. So if I turn the microphone on, I'm now recording and I can record our presentation. And then whenever I want to stop the microphone, I hit stop. And the really cool thing about all of this is I, when I'm done with my presentation, I can email this 85 page document to the consumer. And if they want to print it out, they can. But when they start looking at graphs and charts and all the things you've done, I'm here to tell you it makes a big impression. It will give you a $100 bill message. Now, I want to show you one, one last quick thing because I know we're a little bit over time. I'm going to try to throw my iPhone up here on the screen. There we go. So I'm going to get rid of my... Well, I'll just leave the iPad up there. So uh, I want to go up to RPR. I want to show you this on my phone. So we're going to bring up RPR. I was going to bring up RPR. But I can show it to you on the... Let me, let me get out of the... Turn off mirroring. And let's see if I can go into... Hopefully it's going to load up right now. What I want to show you is a really cool thing. I, I mean, I use this app daily. It's like probably I use my email, my phone, email, instant messaging, and then RPR. 
It's the most used apps on my phone. This is like having your MLS on steroids. And so if you're not using it on your phone, you really need to. I'm just going to go back to one of these property or go to a property here. So I'm going to select list and I'm going to just pull this property up right here on Cimarron. And let's just say you were out listing this property. You can pull up any property that's in RPR, even, even if it's never been listed. That's what's cool about RPR, all of the data that's here. But go down here to notes. If you select notes at the bottom and look at this, I can add a note. So if I want to type a note in, I can type, you know, or I can use Siri, right? I can say, I'm having a great time today with the RPR attendees for the RPR mobile class, period. And if you're like me, sometimes I find myself leaving a voice message which I did the other day, and I said new paragraph, and then I said period, and then I hung up the phone, and I thought, oh my gosh, I just, <laughs> I just left a voice message with a, where I gave all kinds of uh, grammatical punctuation type uh, items. But look at that! I can then hit save, and now I'm going to go on over to the photo. If I want to add a photo, I can take a picture. So there's my computer and my iPad. So I'm going to take a picture of that. I can use the photo. So if someone had a survey on the counter, utility cost, they had restrictions, I just take pictures of it right from my phone. And if I want to include that in the reports, I can do that. Or I can say, you know, I don't want to include that in any reports. It just depends what it is. Or you could take a picture of the outside of the home if you wanted to get a better home. And if you're doing room measurements, Guess what? You have the voice audio recorder so I can start recording and I can describe the house as I walk through and I can use my electronic tape measure and say 14 by 26 kitchen. It has oak cabinets. It's got a breakfast bar in the middle. With, and then I pause. I go to the next room. I hit record. I say dining room. I use my electronic tape 22 by 16 and I describe hardwood floors, whatever, stop, go to the next room. And then when I hit done, I save this and it's saved right within that specific property. Now let's watch this. I'm going to disconnect from the phone and I'm going to go, well, I thought I turned off. There we go. I'm back here. I'm going to go to my uh, recent properties. So I'm going to refresh my screen. And we should see this property on in Holiday Park. What was Cimarron should show up here in just a second as this refreshes. So we should see Cimarron. There it is. When I select Cimarron, guess what will happen? There is the photograph. There's my audio recording. There's, I'm having a great time with the RPR group. And just so you can see what's really cool about all this to bring it all back together. If we go back over here to RPR and I close. It, everything stays in sync because oh, it's re refreshing there. So uh, I'll go back over here. I'll do this little drop down. Remember where I can go to the recent properties. There's Cimarron because that's the most recent property I pulled up. And if we pull this up and we go down to notes, you will notice that I actually have this property has the notes and the audio recording and everything right there. So, I mean, this is really an awesome program. Everything, the iPad you use a lot. Um, I will kind of just show you this just so you can see. Um, NAR, RPR, and then we'll wrap up here. Uh, just so you can see, because I've been on another iPad, it's trying to figure out. This guy's going from the iPad to the desktop and 
I'm confusing the computer brain, so hopefully it'll log me in here and not say think that I'm, but yeah. So, um, so here I am, and here's those recent properties for sale. But what I like about using the the iPad is when I'm drawing on it or making notes, sometimes I can use my fingers and pinch it, pinch in and search around. But uh, however you want to use it, it's up to you. But it, it's a great program, and I really encourage you to take a look at it. We didn't get to really look at some of the reports, but there's some great reports out there. So, um, so uh, Candace wanted to know, where do I find different addresses to search versus a subject property? So I presume, Candace, I'm going to go back here to the RPR app. It may have logged me out. You'll see here. Hopefully it's going to bring me back in. But you can actually uh, select that. There was a button there, Candace, that said search for additional comps. So you could, you could either search for additional comps there or you can actually uh, go up here to the – bring this up so we can see it. You can go up here to the, to the search bar. And here I can just do a free free flow search. You know, I can put an address in and search. But if I want to bring this property up here, a recent property that I had, if you want to search properties around this property, Candace, if you scroll down below the map, you can find nearby properties for sale and nearby comps. So the best way to do that, if if you couldn't, if you couldn't find this property, is to go up here. You know, we'll go to the home button and then go to the search button, search the property that you want to pull up. And then when you pull that property up by, you know, typing in the address, you will then be able to search for comps around that specific address. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. And I hope that answered your question. But thank you. That's a great question. Uh how do you connect the pin so it can be used in RPR? Okay, and that's a great question. Thank you for that. Be if you'll notice, when I pulled my report up, I had to export it to an application that will allow me to take the report and write and, and be able to write on the report. Unfortunately, RPR does not have the ability for you to write directly in the RPR app. So what you have to do is pull your property up and then just print a report of that property. And when that report comes up, which is what I did, right? Uh, what I did is then you, you, you import it or export it into, you export it into Notability and then Notability is a program that allows you to handwrite and do various things. Now, I use Notability for a couple of reasons. I take, you know, I could just bring up a, a blank sheet of paper in Notability, and I can take notes in a meeting or on a listing appointment. And if my sellers are okay with it, I always ask if they'll let me record their voice, you know, record. And then as I'm taking notes, it's recording. So I, I'm able now to have a recording of all the information. I will show you this. I use this little app right here called Audio Note for my listing presentations and really when I'm in any any uh, meeting. And what's really cool about Audio Note is you'll notice I recorded this meeting from Washington DC. And notice that I just typed in the topic that was being talked about. So if I want to go back in and just listen to the money laundering portion, all I have to do is come down here. It was at 37 minutes into the presentation, press money and it press the play button. And now I'm actually listening to that part of the, of the, uh, of the presentation. So how do I use this on a listing appointment? Of course I, you know, I put the title of the, the uh, address of the property, but I might, and I hit record right there. And so when we're in the kitchen and I, of course I have my customer's approval, I'm either typing because you can type or I'm taking notes. But what's really neat is 
whatever we talked about in the kitchen is being recorded. So I've got this long list of all this stuff that we talked about. And when I'm done and I want to listen to just that portion, all I have to do is click kitchen and hit the play button and it will start recording from that from that. I mean, it'll play the recording from that part. So there have been times that I needed to find out some information and all I had to do was drop down here and click outside because I knew it was out by the central air when they gave me the, all the lowdown and information about how old the central air was. And so now I just go into my recording and I press the outside button or central air, whatever I talked about, and I have the recording for that specific part of the um, of the listing. So I use Audio Note. It's called A U D I O Note for for all of my listing appointments. But I use Notability for my reports, my PDF documents, and my reports. And you could even pull up your MLS reports in this to be able to write and annotate and do that various things. So, and again, all you have to do is hit the back arrow and, uh, or use the eraser and it'll get rid of everything. Well, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I've got, uh, will, will we have a comp analysis light from mobile available? Yes, that is coming. Uh, and, and Tamara just told me that it will be available for the phone on August 2nd and for the tablet on September the 6th. And Tamara, thank you for that, because that is going to be very, very awesome when we, uh, when we have that ability. I mean, it's just to be amazing what the RPR team is doing with um, being able to open lockboxes, to complete contracts, to do, you know, things we can do from our mobile phone is just so amazing. And, you know, I, I just launched my online real estate school in Missouri. And so I'm really, I'm doing some Google advertising and I'm watching all of the statistics. And it's amazing to me, over 70% of the people who are finding my real estate school online are finding it from a mobile device. I mean, the laptop is almost extinct people just are not using it like they used to. So got a great, uh, a great. So I hope this was helpful. Um, and somebody said discussing called audio note. Yes, it's called audio note. So uh, I did record this. I'll stop the